when Holdsworth left, you know, they were they were they didn't know. Uh, they only knew the guys on the jazz scene, which was. I don't know, quite a lot of players, but none of them really suitable to take over. And um, it was lucky that Holdsworth left them my number because although I was quite well known on the prog rock scene, I wasn't known on the jazz scene at all. And I'd never really played, apart from with Art Seaman, I'd never played with any of these sort of jazz British legends who were a bit frightening really, you know, John Marshall, Roy Babington, these people were kind of like, oh, wow, I'd seen them play, you know, and they were like, you know, amazing. So uh, it was great, but, but luckily he left them my number and they called me because uh, I certainly felt I was probably the right guy to do it. And um, I think, funny enough, I was thinking about this the other day, if they hadn't had that album to promote, Bundles, which they needed to promote, so they needed a guitarist, I think after a little bit of auditioning, one or two, they would have gone back to saxophone. Mm -hmm. I think they would have done. And it was just lucky for me that they called me and they had this tour, you know, and they needed a guitar player. And they, they, did, they, did, they did auditioned with four or five guitar players, all of whom were very nice jazz kind of players, but not right for that. And uh, so, you know, luckily for me, in a way, he, they got my number and, and I did the audition and it was fine and and that was really because for that whole early 70s period it was quite rare I mean let's say Phil was doing it you know, <coughs> and me and Ollie Halsall they worked with Gary Boyle once as well Gary but he had his own Gary band. Gary had his own thing going on yeah Gary was there and, and Ollie Halsall was Phil you know <coughs> few guys working in this sort of fusion area, but not many. Yeah. And that was great. And that was great because there was a shortage of guitar players who could do more than... There was no, no shortage of people who could do Clapton, but there was a, there was a great shortage of people who could do anything else. Yeah. You know, which is great. And how did you meet Oldsworth at the time? How, how you ah, well, I kind that happened. I think I spoke to him a few times at gigs just, or I remember meeting them once, when he was, must have been with Tempest at Watford Gap Services. And the thing is, I'd been in the Melody Maker quite a lot. And uh, I don't know, if, or maybe he'd heard some of the Daryl Wade Wolf albums, I don't know. But anyway, so what happened? I was in the guitar shop. So what I used to do, I used to hang around in the guitar shop, get out of the house, go and sit in the guitar shop playing all the guitars. And one day I was sitting there and he was in there and he came up and he said, oh, hello man, how are you doing? And I went, oh, well, Daryl Wes Wolf was packed up. He said, what are you doing? I said, well, nothing. He said, wow, mm, okay. <coughs> and the Tony Williams thing may have been coming up because he took my number. Now, people who know Alan, this is a very organized story, actually, because uh, he, he took my number, so maybe the thing of leaving Soft Machine and going with Tony Williams was on the cards or something like that It was in two time. phases. It was the first thing he did with Tony Williams with Jack Bruce. That's right. That didn't get off the ground. No, that didn't. And then no. a few months later you had the second offer. Yeah, so it was all coming and going with the Soft Machine and all that. And um, so he took my number and then I, he called me from New York and said, you know, I'm with Tony Williams and did they get hot, you know, did they contact you? And I said, no. And so I think then, then maybe he gave me a number. Anyway, I got hold of them, or they got hold of me. No, they got hold of me first. Oh, that's right. They t I was playing with the Global Village Trucking Company. They bloody well turned up. Disaster. Disaster for me. Because, you know, one of the things I, I want to say pride myself, or I do, is I like to be appropriate for the band I'm playing with, right? Okay? So I was playing appropriately for the Global Village Trucking Company. I didn't see it as my stage to be a virtuoso guitarist. So I was just playing some nice, hopefully tasteful kind of slightly jazzy guitar, you know, with the Global Village Trucking Company. And who I joined, they phoned me up for a recommendation. I said, well, I'm not doing anything. And they said, well, you're not the right guy for us. I said, well, you know. <laughs> and they were lovely and I enjoyed it. And Marshall and Jenkins, apparently, they're all, they turned up at Swindon. And afterwards, 
one of the bands said, oh, uh, the soft machine guys were here. I went, oh, oh no. Well, that's blown it. That's the end. And apparently Marshall said, well, he's not much good. And Jenkins had said, I think he's got something. I don't know how he spotted that, because really I was doing very little. Anyway, so they phoned me up, or I phoned them, and we had a re they said, you know, and I said, let's, let's do an audition. And then, then I went down, played properly, and, you know, played, <laughs> gave it my all, <laughs> and they were okay with it. But, I mean, that was a very near miss. Not that I was quite happy with the Global Village Festival, but, you know, because if I hadn't got into the soft machine, then I wouldn't have joined Stefan Grappelli. And uh, so it's thanks to Alan, really. <laughs> and the, the near, yeah, Swindon it was, <laughs> I don't know, I forget. Supporting Gong. Yeah, yeah, Supporting Gong. And at the end of it, you know, uh, the, the, it was John Owen, the singer, he said, oh yeah, the soft machine guys there. I went, oh no, I mean, if I'd known they'd been there, I'd have probably broken the rule and prayed inappropriately for the uh, <laughs> for the band, you know. They'd all be going, what's happened to John? He's like flying about, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so did they come and check you out before you got the call from Alan? No, 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 they didn't know, they hadn't heard of me. They only knew their jazz people. Yeah. They didn't know anybody in the rock they'd not heard of me. But they, they came to the gig? They came to the gig after Alan had recommended yeah, okay. me. Mm -hmm. So Alan said, oh, get this guy. And they came along and heard me with Global Village Tracking Company and went, oh, oh dear. <laughs> and luckily, Carl Jenkins, I think, I think it was John's, apparently said, he's no good, is he? He said, that's not much cop, is it? And uh, in fact, I got a lot of, it's very interesting, this Global Village Tracking Company tour, because my name was on the programme and I left to join the Soul. And the tour went on. And I still get people coming up and saying, I saw you with the Global Village Strategy Company. You weren't much cop. And I said, where did you see it? And they said, oh, Essex University. I said, well, it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you know, and this went on. And even my first review with the soft machine from Carl Dallas said, oh, despite his rather modest um, performance with the Global Village Trucking Company with a soft machine. He played really well. And he, 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 he'd seen Your Global... Replacement. Well, I'm a replacement, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so even though, as I say, I was... I mean, you know, I'm not saying by, by playing appropriately, it doesn't mean I'm playing badly, but I was just uh, playing, uh, you know, not playing full on. Mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully I was playing well with 